Once you've finished your four drawings, lay them all out in front of you and have a think about which one you think would make the most successful building. I'm going to choose my abstract design. I feel like it's the most successful shape and I can imagine it being a building more than any of the others. Having said that, there's still a few things I need to fix to make it into an even more successful building. So if you imagine my building sitting on the ground, the curves don't really enable that. So I'm actually going to modify, which means just to change slightly, I'm going to modify the bottom of my shape. So you can now see that I'm imagining it sitting on the ground, nice and flat. It looks more um, realistic. So modify it slightly if you need to, you might not need to, but rub out any changes you've made and then go over the shape until you're happy with it and it looks like it could sit firmly on the ground as a solid shape. Okay, now that I'm totally happy with it, I'm going to draw a bigger version of this abstract shape on my new A4 page. We're going to take up most of the page here, but again, remember to leave that bit of room at the top for your vanishing point um, X and your construction lines. So just keep your smaller version beside you and start to mark out um, what I would call anchor points just to figure out roughly where your drawing could sit almost as if it's in a frame um, where's the very top and where does the very bottom come to this is just very approximate so that you can start to see where the shape is going to lie it can be quite difficult to scale something up we're making it bigger and we're trying to keep it in proportion which means it won't distort in size at any point okay so you can use your fingers to scale I'm figuring out that that curve stops about halfway down the length of the building so I'm going to make sure that it also stops halfway down the length of the building in my bigger piece as well. It's a really good trick if you want to try and scale things up and keep them in proportion. The video has been sped up slightly just to show you me sketching out my shape. Um, I took my time over it so you need to take your time too but for the purposes of watching the demonstration I've sped it up ever so slightly. So you can see that I'm holding my pencil really loosely, my lines are very light and sketchy, feathery, I'm not drawing them in one big hard movement, I'm building them tiny bit by bit and I'm adjusting as I go. And if I need to rub any of these lines out they will disappear completely because I've done them light enough. You might notice what I've done is I've started with the front of my building. I've not drawn the 3D edge or the roof, if you might see it like that. Um, I've just drawn the original front shape before I've put in the construction lines and the vanishing point. So we're doing it ex the exact same way we did it when we first designed this abstract piece. But you have it all there as a reference, so you know exactly how you did it the first time. So you should be able to do it pretty much the same, just a bit bigger. But don't do it all in one go, you want to add the 3D element second, just like you did the first time. So I'm adding the construction lines to all the same places that I did in my first attempt. Every time there's a curve or a spike or a change of shape, just take it back to that vanishing point at the top really nice light lines and then you're gonna draw your ghost above the shape just draw exactly what's happening underneath it but above you can think of it as a mirror or as i say a ghost line and then any edges are going to be dictated by the angle set by the construction line keep looking back to your original drawing making sure that you are being guided by it and you're not just beginning to invent once you're totally happy, you can go over all your lines and make them a little bit more bold and then you can rub out your nice light construction lines so that you've just got your shape. Now 
Now we need to start thinking about what your building is going to be made of. So different materials such as glass or brick or concrete um, could be used. Think of the textures, how they're going to look and think of where you're going to put these materials. So for instance, my whole roof is going to be made of glass. If you think about how much light that's going to let in the top of the building, it's going to filter down all the way through the floors down to the bottom of the building. Um, I'm imagining a very open, airy space. So don't just choose your materials randomly. Think about how they're going to affect the design of the building um, and how they're going to function in your building. We also want you to consider how you're going to represent the texture and the look of the material in each place. So I'm representing glass by drawing kind of reflective shards here. So I'm rendering it in a, in a style that represents glass. If you are doing that kind of thing, please think about the angle of the textures you're drawing. So I'm showing you here that we want to continue to use that imaginary vanishing point at the top. So I am going to be making sure that all of my materials are using the right perspective whenever they are drawn in, in any, with any sort of lines. We would also like you to annotate your drawing, which just means to make notes basically, to make comments on which materials you're using and where and basically the reason why you've chosen that so try to justify in a sensible way why a certain bit is glass or concrete or brick um, and just take a wee note of that underneath the drawing or beside or on top. Now here I'm showing you how to represent um, the look of brickwork and I'm going to do a close-up version to show you exactly how I would render each brick to make it look more realistic with a wee bit of shading. So I'm just using this very side of my pencil lead on its edge to create a bit of a rough texture for the brick with shadows and like dents where the brick um, is catching the light and where it's going into shadow because it's that rough cast feel of a brick. You can also draw a wee arrow and draw the material closer up if it is a tiny bit of gravel or a brick that you want to show um, to your client who's asked you to show them the design you could take a little bit and zoom it up close and just show that right next to the drawing with a little arrow to prove how it's going to look close up. Let's also add details like windows and doors. So think about where you want people to enter the building, whether you want to have a few different entrances and exits. What's the main one going to be? What shape is it going to be? Is it going to be a bit of a quirky shape that's going to reflect the feel of the building or maybe part of the animal you were inspired by? Um, show us the material, show us door handles, lots of detail please. You also want to think practically about windows and structure. I've added a lot of um, structure to my windows on top because I know that panes of glass would have to be built in sections. It couldn't just be one big curved pane of glass for that size of roof. So try to be practical. Think about where would a car park go? Would I have more windows? Um, how much light do I need to get into areas of the building? Try and reflect the shape of the building around the window, think about if it's going to look aesthetically pleasing, make all these decisions with thought and consideration. Mm -hmm. 